Alright, first things first, gotta make some bait and get that marinating while I get the rest of my stuff carried down to the water and set up. Twenty-one ounces, old-fashioned oats, two or three handfuls of uh, sweet feed pellets. And, you know, I just kind of randomly pick. There's really no rhyme or reason about which flavor, just whatever I feel like this day. Today, it's going to be sweet potatoes in syrup. Alright, there's the sweet potatoes and the syrup going in. And to give that a little extra kick, I'm going to put some of this brown sugar and bourbon uh, kitchen seasoning in there. Just some kitchen seasoning that we didn't like on our food, so I'll just use it to season up the carp bait. Put a bunch in there. And before I get too crazy with the mixing, I'm going to squeeze those sweet potatoes. I'm going to mash those up a little bit. There we go. You know, sometimes people ask about measurements, about how much this, how much that. And I don't really measure anything. And you don't need to. It's just put some oats and a can of something. Mix it up, give it about 10 minutes for those oats to absorb some of the stuff. And if it's too dry, just add a little bit of water. And if it's too wet, just add a little bit more oats. You know, it's not, it's not an exact science. We're just making fish bait here. We're not making dinner for the queen. So just kind of roll with it, you know. change out all three of my hooks today yeah I was fishing all day yesterday and I hit a couple tree branches I don't remember which ones but this one needs it for sure yeah the lions getting a little ratty looking too needs it and I tossed the hook but I I reused the uh, swivels until they start looking ratty. I know I've probably shown many times on rig. I'll just show, uh, put one together here for those who might want to see it. First thing to go on is a bobber stop. Just thread the line through that little loop, pull it, bobber stop goes on the line, slide it up, then a bead bead goes on slide it up and today I am NOT gonna be using these like I usually do this would be the 99% rig I'm doing a modified 99% rig today and I'm replacing the spring feeder with just a flat 2 ounce no roll sinker and the reason for that is because Yesterday, uh, I got bothered, my rigs got bothered by nuisance fish a lot. And uh, so I'm, do I'm doing this to prevent the uh, hook from getting tangled up inside the spring here. Because that's what was happening a lot yesterday. The fish, you know, were picking up my uh, hook bait and dropping it. Picking up and dropping it. And every time I'd reel it in, the hook was inside here. And uh, so... I'm just going to use a sinker instead, and uh, that way the hook can't get to tangle up in there. So no matter how much they mess with it, the hook bait is still there. So if a big old carp comes along, chases away those nuisance fish, those chunks of corn are still laying there and can get sucked up by the carp. And because I'm doing a sinker instead of, this has, this has a plastic uh, tube that slides up and down the line, but a sinker does not, and I don't want that lead sinker banging on the knot that is going to hold my hook link on so I'm going to put on another bead you'll see how that works in a second and then I need a hook link off here I just keep these pre-tied hair rigs here grab one 
got it pre-tied onto a swivel already. All I just need to do is tie this onto my main line and run it through twice since this is braided line. And then I just do a uh, clinch knot. I know, uh, I think over in Europe they call it a blood knot. So here it is, modified 99% rig. You can see here's that second bead on the bottom that protects that knot from the lead slamming into it. Let's get some bait on there. Today's hook bait is banana flavored boiled feed corn. And I usually do two or three kernels, just depending on how big the kernels are and also how long the hair is. I hand tie these hair rigs, so I try to get them pretty uniformly, but they're not always exactly the same. Sometimes the hair is, uh, you know, a few millimeters longer than the other. No big whoop. Okay, let's get some pack bait on there. And this this won't uh, it won't stay on as good as a spring feeder. I won't be able to cast a mile with it. I look a little flying off. So that's something you that's a disadvantage of doing this, but if you don't need cast real far, then you know it's not a big deal. Here's what's gonna catch my 30 pounder today. There's that banana feed corn on a hair rig with a fresh brand new hook. There's that sweet potato and brown sugar pack bait packed around the sinker, modified 99% rig. And I'm fishing uh, in a two, two depths of water today. I'm gonna, for my left and my right rods, I'm gonna keep them kind of close to the bank over here. That's gonna be in about three feet of water. And then straight out from me, probably 50 yards or so, it's a little bit deeper water and not much, uh, probably five, maybe six feet of water. So I'm gonna have two lines on the margins, on the left and the right, shallow, and one straight out onto the deeper, just to see if, 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 if I don't get any, any action on that deeper, the one out in the deeper, I'll, I'll probably bring it in, but that's what I'm doing today. And where I'm gonna cast, probably about 20, 30 yards off of the bank out there. There's, you, I'm sure you can't see it because this GoPro doesn't, doesn't, won't pick it up, but there's a, a bunch of leaves that have, are floating on top of the surface out there. And it's just, there's, there's just a spot where stuff is just collecting, where there's, some, some, for some reason, the wind isn't hitting that spot at all. There's just a whole bunch of leaves sitting there. I think that's a good spot. If leaves are collecting there, then other stuff is probably collecting there too. Dead bugs floating in the water. Anything a fish would want to eat. And now I got two more hooks to change out yet before I get all my baits in the water. So I change up my tactics a little bit in the fall. It's uh, right now it's towards the end of September, September 23rd I think today. And uh, like typically in the summer, in the heat of summer, during the middle of the day is the hottest part of the day and the sun's beating down on everything and the water's hot and even the fish are hot and they're seeking out places that are a little bit cooler, a little bit more comfortable in shaded places or deep, cooler places. But now, now that the, the days are getting shorter, nights are getting longer, so that means the water's cooling off, uh, now it's kind of flipped on his head and they're, they're gonna be uh, more active coming out into the shallow places in the sunny areas during the middle of the day when because they're looking for water that's just a little bit warmer. So in the middle of the summer, you know, I primarily like to fish either uh, early in the morning uh, before it gets hot or uh, later in the afternoon and in the evening uh, when it starts to cool down again. That hottest part of the day is usually not very productive and right now it's the opposite uh, early in the morning when it's cold they're cold they're not very active and during the middle of the day when the water warms up a little bit and especially the shallow water where the sun can really penetrate and hit the bottom uh, that that warms up and they become most active during the warmest parts of the day and uh, then they kind of shut off again once the sun goes down that's been my experience 
and that's uh, that's the approach that I usually take when the seasons change like this. Oh, what's going on in there? I hear somebody, some car pulled over there and I hear somebody screaming, oh my god, oh my god, I don't know what to do. There you go, see what the hell is going on. Let me know if I get a bite, I guess. Great, I go to help somebody and then I've got a fish going on. Okay. Ooh. I just walked up like a quarter mile up the road. So I heard people sounded like they're in trouble. Yeah, it was somebody their car broke down and they pulled over onto the shoulder. And the grass is so dry on the shoulder that the grass on the shoulder started on fire. But somebody else had already pulled over and uh, instructed them to, uh, or helped them push the broken down car back onto the road. Anyway, they're good. And I got a fish, and it ain't a small one, folks. I wonder how long this has been running. I mean, I, as soon as I got with, back within sight of my rods, I could see this rod was, oh, it's a big fish. This is not a small fish. I'm not gonna guess how big, but it's big. Oh, I was in the super shallow stuff off to my left is where this bay was. No, no. Oh, I hate that. It feels like they came off. All right. I need to relax a little bit here. Need to relax. Let this guy wear himself out. Seems content to just stay kind of off to my left here. Hasn't gone over this way yet to get tangled in my other lines. That's a good fish. I really haven't seen much except for just the hump on the back. And I see the tail come out of the water a little bit when he goes on these little power runs. Oh, it's a big fish. It's big. Oh, stirring up mud. Here he comes, he's getting close. So shallow right here. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yes, 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 yes! <laughs> it is so shallow. I probably could have walked out there. I got my feet wet anyway. Yes, I don't think it's a 30 pounder, but it's a big fish. I'm gonna get a quick weight on this guy. Zero. Right at 15 with the net, so we'll call it 14. All right, first fish of the day. She's a beauty. Came in around 14 pounds. Big silver scaled, orange tailed, 
uh, bit while I was while I was up there investigating what in the heck was going on up by the road up there. But uh, I'm happy to have this fish still after that 30 pounder this year. But I'll take these fish all day long. Great fight, great fight, especially in this shallow water out here. Every time this fish would go for a run, there's just be this enormous splash and wake out there. It'll just look like there's I was fighting a shark out there. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, get a get a release on this guy and catch him again another day. Just gonna let him sit there for a minute and re-energize, get charged back up. There he's starting to flare his gills there a little bit. That's a good sign. All right, I'm just gonna step out here and get this guy released. It's a little too shallow out here to do net release. Just gonna let there he goes. <laughs> See you later, thank you sir. So it's 3.07 in the afternoon. Middle of the day, warmest part of the day. Hopefully find another active fish or two. We've got to get these baits back out there. Get off of there. What are you doing? Big fish just spooked right there in front of me. Yep, I'm hooked up. Okay. The noise from me getting up spooked a fish that was just right in front of me. This is a. Uh, this is another big fish. I am not really moving him very much. <laughs> He's, he's heading for the bank down there. He's... Yes, 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 yes. Big wake in the water coming. Oh my goodness, can you see that? <laughs> can you see that over there? It's just coming in. This is a big fish. I'm gonna try and land this guy over here if I can, cause uh, it's a little bit deeper over here. When I landed that first fish, oh, over there, I mean, I had the net reaching out 10 feet out into the water and it was still only six inches deep. We're doing good here. There he is. <laughs> this is another good, good, good fish. And I said it is deeper here, but not by much. I mean, instead of six inches deep, it's probably a foot deep. Ten feet out here. Two big fish already. Better not count my chickens before they're hatched here. Big tail. <laughs> I love it when they do that. I'm just gonna be gently coax them over top of the net and then lift it up. No! Oh. I'm gonna let you go, buddy. Come on in. Yes! He's in the net. All right. Look at that big back. Ah. 
I think I got a fish on that other line. All right, let's grab a quick weight. We'll make this quick with this guy. Yeah, it's pulling drag. There's another 14 pounder. I'm gonna hold this guy up and uh, show him to you real quick. 14 pounder. Look at that beauty. That's a beauty. Yes, I am. Uh, 14 pounder going back. Let's see what that other rod's doing. Yeah, this guy wasn't out for more than a three minutes. You gonna go? You can figure out which way to go, don't you? Yep, thank you. And we are hooked up with fish three. Fish two is still just hanging out right there, about 15 feet off the bank. Fast and furious here, fast and furious, I love it. I'm not gonna make any predictions, but I'm 100% sure it is not a tiny fish. I had that problem here yesterday, not right here, I guess. I was fishing this lake, but different, different place, but uh, start the day I was catching a bunch of three and four pound fish which is fine but this is uh, undoubtedly a little more exciting I don't know what what the deal is with this carp he's just hanging out there it's not it's not like there's anything wrong with him usually you know if there's something wrong they'll turn sideways they'll buy it belly up or whatever he's just sitting there I don't know if he knows. Maybe they know these two know each other, and they're just uh, say hello. <clears throat> I'm gonna before I get that other fish in here. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna give this fish a nudge. There he goes. I never had a fish just sit there like that for that long. Well, it was after a 30 pound fish today is the goal, but I'd say today we're getting upwards of 30 pounds of fish, although not just all just in one, within one fish body. <laughs> this net fills up with water if you lay it in the water and then it weighs like 10 pounds. Got him. Yeah. You don't like that, do you? That's all right. They're coming in fast now. Coming in fast. I only got one line in the water right now. Yeah, this guy's yeah, around 13, probably around 12. Subtract the net. What a great day of fall carp fishing. Another beauty, beauty. A little smaller than the, the previous few, but no less fight at all. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. These are all just pristine fish. I'm sure they've never been caught before. What a great day. And that water is pretty, pretty cold on my feet. I'm guessing it's in the, I don't know, 60s, upper 60s maybe. Get this guy turned around. Let him sit there. I think I've said it before, but sometimes you see people that hold a fish by the tail like this and they'll yank it, pull it back and forth through the water, trying to force water up the gills. That's bad for the, that's not how the fish's gills work. For the fish to get oxygen, the water has to come from front to back. It has to go in the mouth and out the gill slits. The gill slits are exit only. Just like we have, uh, we've got an exit only uh, part of our body, right? If you were thirsty, somebody tried to shoot some water up your butt, that wouldn't, uh, that wouldn't solve the problem, would it? Same deal here with the, with the fish gills. The best thing to do is just put their head in the water 
And when you see their gills slits moving back and forth like that, that means that they're moving water through. That's all you need to do. And this guy just seems content to just uh, sit here and uh, be the example, I guess. And my other rod's going off. <laughs> Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Seriously, I'm, I didn't. I'm not planning this. It's kind of. It couldn't have gone better if I did, though. Either I'm wrapped around something, or this fish is. This fish is spooking other fish out there. Is what's happening. I think. <laughs> I have zero lines in the water. Both my other rods are laying on the ground over next to the camera over there. Uh, I don't know if I've got a bunch of weeds on my line or what's happening here, or this just fish, this might be a 30, or if this is a 30 pound fish or something. I think he's got me wrapped up in a tree branch or something. Got to be. Hmm. Darn. All right. I'm just going to engage the bait runner on this and let it sit. Maybe this fish, is, if this fish is still on, see if it can work itself out. And I'm going to get my other two rods baited back up. It's 352. So that's uh, four fish within the hour. Love it. All right, I got the uh, other two lines baited and put out. Let's see, there hasn't been any movement on this, so I'm pretty sure the fish is gone and I'm just tangled. <clears throat> yeah, I lost that rig. That's all right. It's been a long time since I lost a rig, I think. Like a bullhead did that. No, that is not a bullhead. It's the fifth fish here. It's more than I really would have asked for today. Another large fish. It's not small. Come on over here, buddy. Oh, is this a mirror? No way. No way. Oh, what? What is a jet ski doing out here? The water is like 65 degrees. Get out of here. That just proves that jet skis. Never mind. Let's focus on the fish here. I think I got a mirror carp here, folks. Something about this fish looked a little different. It is a mirror. I'm walking out to get this fish. I'm not wasting any time. Get in here. Oh! <laughs> oh, it's not a giant, but it's a mirror. It's the second mirror carp I've ever caught in my life. Oh, man. Folks, look at this mirror carp. I'm going to hold him down for this camera first. Make sure the, because the lighting on that one's just not good because I'm in the shade. Wow, look at that. Look at that guy. Fully scaled mirror carp. And he's got the uh, real cool orange tail like all the other fish have here. I'm going to flip him over and show the other side. And here's the other side. Look at those scales. Isn't that cool? Orange fins. Bam! This is the highlight of my day, even though this is not the largest fish. I'm not even going to weigh this fish. Five, six pounds is my guess, but uh, sweet. That's 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 awesome to know that they're in here too. 
amazing, amazing. Well, I could sit here for several minutes looking at this fish, checking out the scales, but I'm not gonna delay his, his day any longer. And I'm not greedy, I'm not gonna keep fishing. I, I've had my fill for the day. It's a fantastic day. I'm gonna go home and feel great about the day. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, I appreciate it. See you on the next one. Hey, Mr. Mirror Carp, I'll get my feet wet for you too. Set up right, you know, you take off. I'm just gonna hang out like the previous fish. Just turned around. See ya!